Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The U.S. Navy has been at the forefront of both ship design and naval tactics for over 200 years. And as ships have become larger, more powerful, and more important to the country, maintaining order and influence in the world, new tactics and techniques have had to be devised to protect them. There's no denying that a $10 billion amphibious assault ship or aircraft carrier with several thousand crew members on board makes for pretty tempting targets. So when operating in potentially hostile waters, these vessels rely on specific formations in order to protect themselves. Generally, this means pairing two or more vessels together so that they complement each other's strengths and weaknesses. For instance, a destroyer or frigate might rely on air support from a nearby carrier. Alternatively, a submarine might patrol a carrier's perimeter to protect against incoming submersibles. Perhaps the most recognizable naval formations are visible when the carrier strike group assembles. This is essentially designed to function as a self-sufficient, fully mobile group featuring at least one aircraft carrier at the center, one or more cruisers, and any number of destroyers, submarines, and logistics ships surrounding, forming the perimeter. Those strike groups with a particularly long mission may also feature resupply ships, which carry fuel and other important materials for the entire fleet. Despite their size, carrier strike groups are extremely versatile. Depending on the nature of their mission, they can take on a defensive or offensive posture. They can also quickly engage enemies in the air, on land, and above or below the water. All in all, the U.S. has nine carrier strike groups. In peacetime, these groups practice a variety of drills and exercises in order to ensure constant combat readiness. Live fire drills are one of the most important exercises a U.S. Navy crew can participate in. These are not only integral to training crew members in the use of their offensive and defensive equipment, but in testing the overall capabilities of the vessel itself. Here, the USS America, an amphibious assault ship, conducts a live fire drill using a simulated unmanned small fast attack boat as a target. The operation involves the use of high-powered optics to identify and track the target, as well as several of the ship's main weapons. Among them is MK-38 25mm cannon, which is controlled via remote. Crew members also engaged the decoy craft with the ship's 50 caliber machine guns, successfully disabling it in just a few minutes. When direct engagement is not an option, even the largest ships need to be capable of evasive maneuvers. In fact, even Nimitz-class aircraft carriers, which are more than 1,000 feet long and weigh up to 100,000 tons, are capable of moving at speeds of up to 35 miles per hour or more. They can also perform sharp turns and maneuvers one might associate with much smaller ships. 
One of the most important techniques for evading potential attackers is known as drifting. This is when a ship maneuvers quickly by utilizing both the rudder and the hydrodynamics of the water to shift course quickly and confuse enemy ships. In fact, in just 30 minutes, an aircraft carrier can occupy anywhere within a 700 square mile radius. This, along with sophisticated jamming techniques, can be enough to confuse enemy ships or subs and keep them from succeeding in their attack. As powerful as aircraft carriers are, it's arguable that the workhorse of the United States Navy is the destroyer. These are fast, maneuverable, long-endurance warships designed to escort carriers and other large vessels, defending them against a wide range of attacks. Over the years, these vessels have grown and expanded in both capability and technology. With newer models, like the Arleigh Burke class, representing some of the most versatile ships in the ocean. At 500 feet long, these ships boast a top speed of more than 35 miles per hour. They are also bristling with armaments. Though these vary from ship to ship, they typically include one or more phalanx CIWS cannons, multiple torpedo tubes, automatic cannons, and heavy 50 caliber machine guns for close defense. Many destroyers also carry one or more Seahawk helicopters or drones to provide airborne reconnaissance and defense. By far, one of the most dangerous weapons a destroyer can wield is the Harpoon anti-ship missile. At 1,500 pounds and 15 feet in length, these missiles pack an enormous amount of destructive power. The average warhead is 488 pounds and can devastate even the largest enemy ships. Once fired from their deck-mounted tubes, these missiles skim the sea at speeds of up to 537 miles per hour, tracking their targets with sophisticated radar guidance technology. Weapons like this are frequently tested on derelict or decommissioned Navy vessels during special Sink X exercises. As with other defense scenarios, this gives crew members a first-hand look at just how powerful the weapons really are. When it comes to maintaining a strike group's offensive and defensive superiority, aircraft serve an integral part. The average carrier boasts nearly 100 different airplanes and helicopters, all of which can be in the air in minutes, to provide reconnaissance or to engage hostile forces. Many of these aircraft are highly advanced and extremely versatile, making them an excellent choice for any first engagement scenario. Naval aircraft are expected to perform a variety of missions and engage with a number of different foes. While they will carry all of the standard armaments to defend against enemy aircraft, they also carry a variety of weapons to deal with enemy ships. Aside from being able to launch harpoon missiles, many naval jets also carry a wide selection of bombs and other heavy munitions. In certain scenarios, they can merely fly over the top of enemy ships and drop devastating weapons onto their decks.
even a near miss can result in a remarkable amount of damage. Here, the F-35 features a 25-millimeter, four-barrel rotary cannon that is capable of firing up to 1,800 rounds per minute. This gives the aircraft the ability to engage fast-moving boats as well as larger enemy vessels. All in all, these sophisticated airplanes are just one cog in an offensive and defensive machine that starts on the water's surface. and encapsulates thousands of feet above and below. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.